everybody. Welcome back to Diesel Creek. My name's Matt. This, this pile of yellow goodies over here may look like scrap to the average layman, but to the trained eye, this is treasure. This is yellow gold right here. Uh, a very, very, very generous subscriber to the channel reached out to me after the last D8 video and he said, hey Matt, I saw your pony motor uh, had some problems there. If you're interested, I've got a couple of them laying here and uh, they're yours if you want them. So that was mighty generous of him. I hopped in the truck and I made a trip because these pony motors are not impossible to come by, but they're definitely getting harder to come by and they don't make parts for them anymore. So the pony engine on our D8 in the last video uh, it, it definitely had some failures. Something must have let loose in the gear case and caused the actual gear case itself to split and uh, we lost all the oil out of it. And it gave its dying breath to get that old girl started one last time so that we could get it loaded up and on the trailer. So there's some other miscellaneous odds and ends here, but the big thing here on this pallet is two pony engines. One of them came off of a D9 and one of them came from a D7. I don't believe that the one off the D9 will work directly for us. I believe that something's a little bit different on this piece, uh, which is the piece that actually engages the flywheel on the diesel engine. But I believe we could change that if needed, not to mention the one from the D7, I do believe should bolt right up. And I was promised that the one from the D7 was good for sure. And the one from the D9 was in unknown running condition. In addition to pony engines, we found some other goodies in his yard that he was uh, more than willing to give us for the cause. This came off of a D9G. This is the dashboard with the clutch levers and everything. And I mainly just wanted the gauge panel out of here, but he said, take the whole thing with you. So now we got a, a dash panel to a D9G. I do believe the dash is the same on the, the nine as the eight. So, you know, theoretically, if we ever needed the dash for some reason, we, we would have one thing for sure, it is heavy. There's the good stuff right there. That's what we're after. So here's what we had hiding underneath that dashboard. This is the pony engine from the D9. Like I said, this snout that actually goes into the flywheel housing on the diesel engine, I don't believe that is the same as the one in R8. I believe the one in R8 looks like this, which is much shorter. Uh, theoretically, you could change those out, but I'm not positive on that. Anyway, this one has been sitting in a van trailer in dry storage for a long while, I would guess. There's quite a bit of dust on it, but he said that one was a good runner and that's why they saved it. They only pulled it off of the machine because they switched out to electric start. So while we were walking around their yard looking at other treasures, we came across a couple generators and a uh, starter for the pony engine. So he threw those in on the pallet as well. And so that was super generous of them guys. Big, big thanks. Uh, and he's got some more treasures up there that I'm sure I'm gonna end up with eventually. Anyways, I brought these guys into the shop today because I wanna get that old D8 fired up and ready for action here very soon. I've got a job here behind the building that uh, I'd like to do with the D8 just for fun. And I'd like to also take that machine up to the steam show as well as uh, I'd like to start restoring that machine at some point here, but I need to prove its mechanical abilities before we even worry about cosmetics. So I brought these in here because I wanna get these running. I wanna verify that they both function and run. And uh, after that, then we can figure out which one we're gonna put onto our D8. I do believe it's gonna be this one, but until they're both running, or at least one of them is running, I have no idea. All right, we got us a pony on a pallet here. I've just clamped some angle iron to one of the mounts back here. These things obviously aren't meant to sit. Uh, they're always nestled up against the side of the, the main engine on a dozer, so they really don't have any way to sit flat. So I have it anchored down here as best we can so that we can play around and try to get this thing going. This is the first that I've really uh, 
gotten to look at these things. They have been sitting here for a couple months now. But so back here is your uh, high low range section of your transfer case. So as you can see, the case is marked high and low. Oh, look at that. The, it's even labeled gear shift in case you're too dumb to figure it out. Seems to shift in okay. Not a ton of backlash. That's good. I did break this solenoid, unfortunately, on the top of the starter here. And of course, made in the USA. Probably can't find any of those anymore. This guy right here, this guy right here is what actually engages the pony engine to the gearbox. So there's probably some sort of clutch in there. I've never had one apart, so I can only speculate. There has to be some sort of clutch, though. Up here, we got a carburetor, of course. They, uh, they taped it off for us, so hopefully it's nice and clean in there still. But we should probably take that down and open it up just to have a little gander inside. Make sure it's not filthy. Back here on our exhaust side, they also taped that off before they put this thing into storage, which is great. Urgh. This guy right here is packed full of grease, but this is actually where a crank starter would go. And theoretically, you can start up your D8 or even a D9 with a nothing more than a hand crank if you don't have a battery. So there's a special crank goes in there. We'll have to clean that all out so you can see it. But you can spin that around and that'll jump start the pony engine, which can jump start the big engine. On the front of the engine here, we have our magneto and what should be plug wires coming out of it. But as you can see, they're in pretty sad shape. We're going to have to get some new plug wires going on this guy because uh, I'm betting these are no good, unfortunately. So these pony engines are a water-cooled engine. As you can see, they got water jackets all over them that circulate through the, uh, the cylinders and head. So if we do get this thing running, we're not going to be able to run it very long, just enough to verify that it sounds like it's an okay running engine. This thing's been sitting upright now for about 20 minutes. See if we got any oil. Oh, well, we do. That's good. I don't know if you guys can see that. It looks like it's uh, fairly close, although we are probably leaning a little more forward than we would be in position on the tractor. Back here we have oil in the gear case. There's a little bit in there. So where do we start? Well, I guess we should start with some plug wires since these are completely foobar. I'm going to grab the ones that we made up for the pony that's already on the D8, since those are brand new plug wires, we can just throw them on here and know that they're good. I'm feeling feeling lucky today. I'm gonna gamble, and we're just gonna put fuel right to that carburetor uh, without taking it apart. So that'll either pay off or it won't. And then uh, everything else, I guess, is good enough to give her a go. I don't remember what I absconded those uh, plug wires for, but they're MIA. These plug wires that are on the other engine here don't look too bad. We can try them out at least. I guess we're going to have to come up with some new spark plugs for this guy too. I could see that was cracked and broken. And I'm sure this is far behind. Certainly don't want one of those little chunks of porcelain dropping down into the cylinder. That could cause some serious damage. I think I'm just going to go steal the plugs out of the one that we know runs on the tractor. Ta-da! Two brand used RJ8C. I don't know if those are the correct plugs that are supposed to be in these or not. But I do know that they made the other engine run, so they ought to work on this one. I pulled this small piece of old fuel line off of here, and as you can see from the end of it, it's got some sort of a mud dauber nest in it, and they were able to get all the way into the fitting in there, so we got to pull the fitting out and blow it out really good, otherwise we're just going to push that nastiness into the carburetor bowl. Well, whoever the last person was that was in here, they put uh, PTFE tape on the threads here. It really shouldn't be necessary with a brass fitting like this. And a lot of times this stuff isn't fuel rated and uh, 
it'll break down and actually get into the fuel system and clog things up. So we're going to peel that off of here. If it leaks, we can pull it back out and put some fuel rated stuff on there. Well, we blew that little critter out of there. All right, we got us a temporary fuel tank hooked up here. Fuel lines plumbed into the carburetor. Go ahead and turn this valve on and see if it just starts pouring fuel everywhere. Well, that looks pretty good. I guess we're at the point now where we can uh, grab a jump pack and, well, I guess we're gonna have to change out that solenoid too, but we can uh, grab another solenoid off the shelf and the jump pack and see if this thing is gonna turn over for us. Got our solenoid changed. I put a little jumper wire on here, so we should be able to touch this wire up here to this exciter post, and it should work. You guys ready? Contact. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's exciting. The exhaust is going to blow right in my face, too. That's going to be just perfect. Seems like it's got good compression. Sounds like it's got a nice healthy thud to it. Um, so we didn't check for spark yet, which we're going to basically do right now. If this thing doesn't want to light off and we don't hear any kind of popping sounds out of it at all, probably don't have spark. I'm willing to bet that we don't have it anyways, but before we tear something apart, might as well try. I grabbed a cheater pipe too for the uh, clutch engagement here. There we go. So the clutch is disengaged right now. And the reason it doesn't have a nice handle like this guy here is because there's linkages that hook up to this thing and you're actually able to engage this from the seat of the tractor rather than doing it down here. Here goes nothing. Contact. So in theory, so in theory, getting spark back to this thing shouldn't be a big deal. Usually what the problem is, is the points inside of this cover here get oxidized. There's a set of breaker points, just like in a car ignition system, only this set of points is run by a magneto rather than a uh, coil and condenser. Well, there's still a condenser in there, but rather than a regular 12 volt automotive coil, you have a magneto. And just like points in anything else, they can oxidize from sitting a long period of time. This screw is loose. I think that's a kill switch. You can put a ground wire on there and shut this pony engine off from the seat. You don't really need that because you're better off to run pony engines out of fuel every time rather than grounding them out and killing them like anything else. All right, so this is the last screw here. I'm hoping this cover isn't a bear to get off of here because when we revive the D8 that we want to put this on, yeah, the cover was really on there. I was able to get that one off without breaking it, but I was really concerned and I'm starting to be starting to be concerned about this one. There we go. A little tappy tap all the way around. Fix it right up. That's interesting. This wheel here spins around and it has contacts on it that feed out into these graphite uh, deals here. Those are spring loaded. They're supposed to be. I just pushed them in and they stuck in. So I have to work on getting those. See how that, that's a graphite button right there. I'm not sure if you guys can see, that's a graphite button right there. It's spring loaded. You push it in, it springs right back out. These guys over here are as well, but I just pushed them in and they stayed in. So I'm going to have to work on getting those back out and freed up and moving right. This wheel here is what feeds spark to those contact points, those graphite ones. And it's got a bunch of residue on it. So we're going to have to get some contact cleaner and clean that up. Tucked in behind that wheel though is our breaker points. And I can see, yeah, they are very oxidized. So I'm going to grab an emery board and we're going to clean those up. Oh yeah, these buggers are corroded up bad. 
See how much crap's coming off onto the emery board there? Yep. A lot of crap came off of that little disc there. Alright, I've played around and got these spring-loaded deals working in here again. Points are clean, contact disc is clean. Let's put this thing back together and hope we got spark. Fuel on, chocolater on, contact. Still not feeling real good about this spark issue. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> we got spark. The old girl's just not getting fuel. Set that choke to 100%. Try to pull some fuel up through this thing. Let's try that again. Contact. Well, I guess the gamble didn't pay off. We're not getting fuel up through this carburetor. We're going to have to tear it apart and figure out why. Well, what I can see down through the throat hole there looks pretty good. There we go. But really doesn't look too bad in here. I don't know, we'll hit it with some carb cleaner, clean out all the very small orifices, and slap it back together. You guys have seen me do that a million times, so I'll keep it brief. Well, it didn't take me very long. I think I found the problem here. I tried to uh, blow through this tube and with the floats dangling with the floats dangling that should allow fuel to come through and down into the uh, bowl but not blow through it even with the valve down so got to be something in there clogging that up let's blow it out just pull the float pin out take your floats off give them a little shake make sure they're not full of fuel turn this thing over that valve comes out in your fingers. I always try to look at the tips of the valve right there and make sure it's not got a wear ring around it because if it's worn too much it'll allow fuel to bypass even with the floats closed. From here you could take a big screwdriver and pull out this seat for that needle but in our case I'm just gonna hit it with the air compressor and see if I can blow anything out of there. Could be more that mud dauber nest that we didn't get. Definitely took some pressure to clear it, but I don't see any major chunkage. Oh yeah, it's a lot better right there. Last thing I did, I pulled out this little Venturi tube here out of the bottom half of the carburetor. It's got a bunch of small holes on it, if you can see those, and they were all nice and clean. Didn't have to do anything to that. Slap that back together. We'll put the whole carburetor back together, and hopefully we can get this baby to run for us. All right, carburetor is cleaned. Should be ready for action now. Got it remounted here. Hook up this fuel line, and we are good to try to fire this thing up again. Should be ready to go here. Keep her about mid-throttle. Contact!
<laughs> Woo! That was a great success. Awesome. It sounds like it runs really good. Uh, I'm going to let it cool down for a little bit. I, I mean, you guys didn't see any cuts there. That was one straight through run. So I don't know, what was that, 30 seconds or so? It's not very warm yet, but I don't want to overheat it either. I'm going to let this thing cool down completely for a little bit. I'm going to go grab lunch. We're going to come back, fire it up again, and we're going to test out the high and low here and the uh, clutch engagement and make sure everything else is ready to go before we bother switching this thing into the cat. Here we are about an hour later. Everything is nice and cold, and we're going to try to fire this thing up again and then just verify everything's good inside of here, make sure we don't hear any funny noises during engagement of any of this stuff. It all feels good to just do it here, you know, without it running, but it's another thing to do it when it's actually under load. And even still, it's not truly under load until it's spinning over the diesel. So we're just going to see what we can do here and make sure there's nothing obvious. Throttle about midway. We'll keep that in high to start with. And contact. If you guys can hear it there's a squeaky sound coming from right up here where my fingers are at at the carburetor connection there we go it's finally running out of fuel I, I was trying to choke it out and shut it off by starving it for air but it won't shut off because it's actually getting a little bit of air sucking in that gasket right there it's about out of fuel now <laughs> yeah, I guess it wouldn't hurt to have a ground to kill this thing, at least in testing. The good news is it was running so slow and still wasn't that long. Nothing's hot yet, so I'm not worried we didn't damage anything just now. All good, but uh, this sucker runs excellent as far as I can tell. Uh, the engagement, I had it in my mind backwards for some reason. I thought this was engaged and forwards was... Uh, disengaged but quite the opposite so yeah it seems to be working great in fact it ran so great oh it even broke it dang it my jump pack fell off the pallet here and it broke my positive connection haha -ha. I lied it just popped apart and I was able to fix it right up golden I love this jump pack I am not sponsored by these guys. I've never even talked to them. I don't know anything about it, but people do ask me all the time what jump pack I use, and it is a JNC 1224 by Jump and Carry. This thing is an absolute monster. It, I mean, the things it can crank over just on its own with no other batteries connected, quite impressive. It does 12 and 24 volts, hence the 1224 in the model number. But yeah, there is a link to it in my Amazon store, but not affiliated whatsoever with them. So just running that thing that uh, minute or two that we ran it, I can see why this thing is packed full of grease and dirt and everything. There must be a seal down inside of here that's blown out because it's already dripping oil all over the place. 
but not really a big deal for our needs. I believe this thing, while it's the same component as the one on our D8, this engine came off of a D7, so I think this thing's on a different angle. Um, so we can either change this one and put a new seal in it or take the one off the pony we already have installed on our 8 and uh, put it on there and shouldn't have any issues. The one off of the one still on the pallet over there may also work. So we got three engines to swap parts with and get what we need. So other than a little oil drip, I feel really good about this pony engine. It seems like it's uh, really solid. The gear train and everything all sounds really good behind the pony. The pony sounds like it hits good. It's got good compression, uh, runs nice and smooth. So, I mean, I am like 90% sure this is the one that's going to go uh, into our cat since I don't have to change much of anything on it. We do have one more though. This pony engine here is slightly different, but the actual core engine part is the same. Um, and so is the clutch and gear case housing. What's different, this front cover on the engine here is a little bit different. It's got an oil filter on it. They don't have the uh, hand crank adapter on there, although it looks like it's probably uh, made so you could put it on there if you wanted to. I don't know if that oil filter would get in the way for our purposes, but theoretically, if you had to, you could switch out the whole front cover if it was an issue. This part is longer uh, than the one from the D7. I believe this one is also longer than the one from our D8. So what that would entail to change these out, I'm not entirely sure, definitely changing this cover. The other thing with this engine is they don't know the condition of it. Um, the guy that gave it to me had never run it, I don't believe. And this thing, you can see it's got all this dirt laying on here. It was laying out in a scrap pile for a while. Now, I believe it probably still turns over and it might still be a great engine. So while we're in here playing around with pony motors, we're going to go ahead and set this one up and try to get it fired up as well and just see what we got here for the future. All right, so after we got it flipped up on the pallet here and strapped down, this magneto is missing some parts. So we're just gonna rob them off of the other engine. And same with the intake elbow here. This one, as you can see, is cracked and broken. So we're just gonna steal the, take these two bolts off the other one, steal the whole elbow and the uh, carburetor with it, bring it over here, and hopefully this thing's gonna fire up. I guess before we even bother switching any of that stuff, we should see if this thing's going to turn over because I have no idea. Okay, I've got the jump pack in what I hope is a less precarious place than the uh, last time so we don't drop it again. See if we've got any connection here. Contact. Oh. Hmm, I don't know if you guys saw that. When the Bendix finally engaged in the starter there, it, it didn't seem to like it a whole lot. This one might be locked up. So I just pulled the engine oil dipstick here and it's close to about the level that it should be. And it doesn't look like it has any water in it, but it does reek of gasoline. So I'm not sure how that would happen in this engine because it's an updraft carburetor, but nonetheless, it reeks of gas. So this thing was laying outside. Looks like it was laying in the dirt maybe. It was gonna get scrapped until he heard that I was looking for pony motors, so. Yeah, you can see how broken this flange is here. But there's a chance some water got down inside of the cylinders here. Although I'm feeling around, I can feel the valve stems in here with my finger, and it doesn't feel like they're oxidized or rusted up at all. It's interesting, on every pony motor I've pulled the plugs from, 
the front spark plug has like a, a buildup on it. You know, it's, it's kind of like it's running rich and then the rear plug is running right. So it has the right coloring, the right uh, buildup on the plug, kind of like that rusty brownish color almost. Not too lean, not too rich. Must be the natural way these things run is a little bit rich on the front cylinder. While we got the plugs out, I'm gonna go ahead and spray a whole bunch of penetrating oil down in here. I'm not sure if it'll work, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a pipe wrench on this output shaft. See if we can't turn the whole thing. There we go. Something's happening. Just seems like it's slipping the clutch though in here. Or actually, you know, that's probably designed to, to throw this out when the motor outspins it. Probably designed not to back turn because you could damage something. Try spinning the other way here. Seems like something's happening. Yeah, I think she's turning now. Just a little stuck from sitting. Sprayed some more oil in there. Let's go ahead and give this another go. Yeah, that was better. She's just a little stuck from sitting. I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of fog the engine here. I'm going to crank it over and spray the oil straight into the intake here. All right, we got our mag all put together down here. Threw some plug wires and plugs out of the other pony motor into it. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit it with some ether without uh, the carburetor on there and we're going to see if this thing pops. Contact! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Did you guys see the flame balls on that? That was great. I'll try that again. Contact! Very interesting. I think we might have a valve sticking because it kind of popped back everywhere there. Yeah, I'm, I'm like 90% sure we have a valve hanging up or more than one valve hanging up because when I put my fingers over the plug holes, I could feel it was pushing air, but it didn't have that oomph that uh, good compression would have. And hitting it with ether like that, you could say that it might come back a little bit and backdraft, but it kind of like poofed out of everywhere at the exact same time. I even went back and reviewed the footage. So the moment that it lit the ether, it popped out. The exhaust is uncovered on both sides here. So it popped out both sides and the intake all at the exact same time. And the only way that that could happen is if you have a valve open, as far as I'm concerned. So, and the very last reason that I'm determining there's a stuck valve is because when I put the plugs in there and completely sealed up the cylinders, or what should have completely sealed up the cylinders, I crank it over and it still spins over like there's no compression at all. So 99.9% .9 sure there's a valve issue. Ta-da! 
Yeah. Looks like uh, all the valves are stuck, in fact. <laughs> There's never a point at which all the valves should be open at the same time. Never, ever a point. Let's try to see if we can't work these valves loose. Just wiped out the cylinders and had a little look here. This is cylinder number two. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but it, uh, it definitely had some water get into there and sit for a while. And I don't think the rings are probably seated again yet. They're probably still a little bit stuck. So when this thing fires up, it might not run the best at first. But that looks worse than it is to run your fingers over that spot. You can't even feel it. So hopeful on that. Cylinder number one looks fine. Uh, definitely got some hours on it though because there's no cross hatch left in either cylinder. We got our head torque down, got the carburetor off the other pony installed. I think we're ready to fire this thing up. Well, try at least. I am gonna have to manually control the throttle on this one. The governor is disconnected at the moment. We got some chocolate, we got plug wires. I think we should be good to go. Contact. Take two, contact. Here, see what it does. Contact. This one here, it runs and it would definitely work for a while and probably for as much as I'm going to end up using that dozer, it would probably be fine. But I don't know if you guys can tell right now, the shop is filled with smoke because this thing is smoky. Now that would probably improve with some running. Like I said, the rings are probably still stuck and also a good heavyweight oil change would probably lessen the smoke and up the compression a bit. So it does run, we do have a viable candidate here. However, I don't think it's in as good a shape as that other one that we already played with. Alrighty, so we got two running pony engines. This one definitely being the better of the two. I have already fogged that one with oil and prepared it for long-term storage for what that's worth. But there's enough parts between this one, that one, and the one that's still on the tractor that we should be able to make something work here. I'm really, uh, really hopeful of that. So I really want to get that D8 back in action because I have a little bit of work here to do at the farm with that machine. And then we're going to take it up to the National Pike Steam Show 
and hopefully get to play with it up there quite a bit. So, so anyways, guys, that's all I got for today. Two more cat engines resurrected from the dead and saved from the scrap heap. So if you like this video and you want to see more like it, be sure to subscribe. And also, if you haven't already, please hit that like button down below for me. It really helps out the channel. It lets me know that I'm making the content that you guys want to see. And it doesn't cost you guys a dime, just a second of your time. That's one way to support the channel. If you would like to support the channel in a little more direct way, head on over to dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. Pick yourself up some hat, t-shirts, stickers, beer koozies, other swag, and related merch over at the store. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. But anyways, that's all I've got for now. So until the next time, thank you for watching. I'll catch you later.